What's up everybody? Jed Johnson here from dieselcrew.com once again. They call me Napalm and I'm coming at you with, this is day 26 that I'm giving you right now, even though I'm a day behind. Just plain fell behind around the Christmas holiday guys, so I'm catching up. And this is a video demonstration um, to answer the question today. Um, if you get something out of this video, I appreciate it if you can give it a thumbs up. If you want to share this with someone who could benefit from it, if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, you can leave it in the comments section below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. So the question is, this was, uh, this was in the video that I talked about earlier in the month about trigger finger. So if you haven't watched that, go ahead and make sure to watch that. That's a good video that every grip specialist should know. So one of the questions that came up from that video was whether there were any um, particular grip exercises that seemed to cause pulley tears in the finger um, more commonly, okay? And there are a couple, so I wanted to talk about that. So it turns out these pulleys in your finger are called A2 pulleys. Now, I'm not really familiar with those. So if you want more information on that, just I would just Google it or check out some of the climbing sites because they have some really good information. So it turns out there's, um, so I've known that there was a crimp grip for years. I actually incorporated that terminology in my card tearing ebook. Um, but I, what I didn't realize is there's actually multiple types of crimp grip. So the only one that I was familiar with was when you're, when you're like with card tearing, when you clench down on cards like this, I referred to that as a crimp grip, but actually that's similar to what they call a full crimp grip. So that's where your fingers are bent in and then your thumb is over top and you're sealing that grip. The half crimp is more like this, okay? And then open crimp is where your fingers are just kind of hanging like this, okay? So that kind of grip. And it turns out that this of the three, this type of grip is safest. And when you start getting into the half crimp or the full crimp, that's where you're running into the, the most risk for an A2 pulley injury. Now, I've had two or three A2 pulley injuries. Well, self-diagnosed. I've had two severe injuries that made me have to quit grip training or drastically modify my grip training habits uh, in, on either two or three occasions. So um, the first time was when I was using uh, the World of Grip rim tops, which is something that you would stick your finger underneath like this, okay, and crimp, and then pick up on it. Uh, and what I did was I had, I believe, 180 pounds added on the loading pin, and someone was like, oh, what is that? Show us how to use that. So I just reached my fingers under there, picked it up, bink, felt something weird in my finger. I was like, sorry guys, let me show you this way. Bink, and I injured both hands in one fell swoop, okay? I was not warmed up. Nothing against the rim tops itself. It's not the equipment's fault. It's In that case, it was the fact that I wasn't warmed up. Um, there's another similar piece of equipment out there called the stirrup which could, uh, which would allow you to train those same grips. So if you have one of those, that's a much, I would say many more people have the stirrup than the rim tops. Again, it's nothing against those two pieces of equipment. Um, there's nothing wrong with those pieces of equipment per se. It's how you train with them. So be very, very careful that when you do any kind of crimping activity that your fingers are warmed up really, really well because you could have something go wrong that will affect your training for a long, long time, all right? So be careful with that, that crimping. This is half crimp, this is full crimp, all right? Uh, and then they say that this is the safest, even though it's not the, the strongest, you're gonna pick up a lot more weight in a half crimp or a full crimp. Um, this happens to be the safest. So the main thing is warm up and condition your fingers so that um, these positions don't injure you. Be smart with your training. Now, I'm going to show you two other pieces of equipment. I'm going to stop the video, get a different angle. I'm going to show you a couple other things where I've 
injured myself as well. So first was the rim tops and then these two other things. So you probably don't, you've probably never seen a video of me doing any rim tops or stirrup and that's because I almost never do it. Um, but I bet you've seen a lot of videos where I'm training on the blob and believe it or not, one of the times that I injured one of the pulleys in my finger was on the blob. And what I was trying to do was, I was trying to, I believe it was lifting the blob with my thumb and my middle finger. So it just got, it, I think I was warmed up and everything. I don't know why it happened. It's just, I'm not, I wasn't used to this. That's why I say get conditioned. I wasn't used to taking and lifting the blob with any less than like three or four fingers. And certainly I hadn't ever tried this before, but people were doing it online and I wanted to give it a try. I lifted it, I got it up, but it actually snapped so loud that it registered on my video camera. It's probably on my YouTube somewhere. Something that I know is on my YouTube also is where I injured myself in 2017. So the blob thing was like way back in 2010 or 2011. In 2017, Brian Shaw put out a challenge to do a hub lift with 15 pounds added. And he wanted a specific plate to be used. I disregarded that and just went down and did 15 pounds on, I believe it was actually this hub. Um, and then what I tried to do was I wanted to top myself. So I wanted to do like the hub lift in this hand and then like inch dumbbell in the other hand or something like that as a combo. And when I did that, something popped in my, I believe it was, I don't remember right now. It was either my ring finger or my middle finger. I can't, I can't recall, but it was an instant burning guys, instant burning. I knew there was something seriously wrong right away. You can see it in the video and that registers on the video as well. It's so loud. So um, again, hub lifting in itself is not super dangerous. Blob lifting in itself is not super dangerous. It's when you go about it dumb, when you act dumb like me, try to do this, without any kind of warm, uh, without any kind of conditioning. And basically I just walked down and started hitting this guys. So it was, I ended up putting myself at risk. Now with this one, well, with this one, I was out for a long time. With this one, I wasn't actually out of training. I could still do a ton of pinching and thick bar. In fact, I got a lot of strength increases during that time, but I could not do any more hub. I couldn't do anything where my fingers were curving. I couldn't do any crush. And uh, I've never gained my crush strength back from that time. So guys, crimping can be dangerous. Tools are not necessarily dangerous. It's how you use them. Make sure that you train wisely and go about things the right way. It's about longevity, guys. It's about keeping yourself safe and strong. That's what I'm here for. I just want the best for you to stay injury free and continue to love grip training for years and years to come. Um, if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And if you know anybody else that's thinking about doing crimp grip training, you might want to send this video their way. Sorry it got so long, but I wanted to cover everything that was related to pulley tears that I could think of. All the best in your training, everybody. Take care.